Hello friends, let's understand now the categories of derivative products. What are the features of these products and what are their uses? We can categorize derivative products using some of the criteria. For example, we can categorize them based on the underlying products such as currencies, currency derivatives, such as commodities derivatives, equity derivatives, fixed income derivatives and so on. Another way of categorization could be by the level of localization. For example, equities and fixed income are by nature more traded within the local boundaries of the nation. So we can call them more of local products. Or there are some derivative products that are inherently international. For example, currencies are inherently internationally traded derivative products. The third category that we'll use in this discussion is by their features and uses. By applying features and uses as the criteria for classification of derivative products, we can look at four broad categories of derivatives. Number one, forwards. Number two, futures. Number three, options. And number four, swaps. Now let's understand each of these in slightly more detail. Forwards are the oldest existing derivative contracts. The forwards came into existence long time back. There is a history of forward contracts way back in 12th century in Europe where wool was being traded in advance. Now, what is this contract essentially? Forward contract is a contractual agreement between two parties to buy or sell an underlying asset at a future date. The quantity is specified, quality is specified, price is specified, even the delivery location is specified. An example would be a potato farmer entering into a contract with the let's say a fries manufacturer potato farmer knows that the product the potato will be ready after harvesting in two months time the fries manufacturer wants to continuously supply fries to their customers so they will enter into an agreement that two months down the line the potato farmer will sell let's say 10 tons of potato of a specific quality at a specific location at a specific price to the price manufacturer. The potato farmer is trying to protect from the risk of the product being not able to sell or the price is not being acceptable to the potato farmer. Whereas the fries manufacturer wants to make sure that he gets the requisite quality of potatoes a certain quantity at a certain price when they need for regular supplies to their customers. So as we can see in the forward contracts don't both the parties carry the obligation. That is, both have to honor the contract. The potato farmer must produce and sell, or maybe he buys from the market if he can't produce, but still he has to deliver the quantity. The fries manufacturer must take the delivery of the quantity and pay for it to the potato farm. So both the parties have an obligation to honor the contract. Likewise, this is a custom contract. This is between two parties. So what is typically called a OTC or over-the-counter contract. So both the parties are free to negotiate and agree on certain terms. For example, they can agree on specific quantity, specific quality, specific delivery location and a price. So these are custom contracts. Now let's look at this next category, which is futures. Futures are very similar to forwards. Futures also are contracts where two parties agree to buy or sell something in future. But Futures are standardized forward contracts. Forwards are very custom between two parties. The terms could be different depending on what the two parties want. Futures are standardized. For example, Nifty futures, which are listed on National Stock Exchange, are standard contracts. Each contract has certain underlying Nifty indices that you can buy. And then the trading also happens in the way which is determined by National Stock Exchange. The pricing also is you know working out in a way which is standard and available to everybody so forwards and futures are very similar except that the forwards are standardized and if they can be standardized then they can be traded on the exchanges so futures also help parties manage the risk however they can also be used for speculation because there's a liquidity and they are standardized contracts L lot of volume on the stock exchanges in the futures and options for example is in the nature of speculation because parties know they can square up the contracts and they can get out of their commitment 
The third category is options. As we know, in forwards and futures, both parties have the obligation. However, in case one party is looking to benefit but doesn't want to take the ob obligation, they can enter into an options contract. Option, as the name suggests, gives the choice to one of the parties, but it is an obligation to the other party. So options defined are a contract that gives the right, but not an obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset on or before a stated date and at a stated price. So the one who's getting this right or an option of course has to pay premium because somebody else is giving him some right and taking an obligation. The person who's writing an option or selling an option, he gets the premium. So options are different from forwards and futures in that sense. An example of option would be a call option where the party gets a right to buy, let's say a stock in future at a specific price for which it has, it has to pay a premium. Another type of option could be a put option where you get a right to sell, let's say a stock or a commodity at a specific price in future. So these two are also called Teji option and Mandi option in the Indian terms. There is also a call come put option or Teji Mandi option. So somebody might get a right to buy as well as sell without undertaking an obligation. On the stock exchanges, you can buy both call and put option at a price that you want. And in a sense, you are acquiring a Teji Mandi or call come put option. This fourth category of option, which is called Bermudan option, which is not that popular, but in which the settlement takes place at a specific date in a month. For example, 15th day of the month, any time in the next three months. So in this sense, options are different from forward and futures. In options, one party only gets the right, the other party has the obligation. The fourth category of derivative products are called swaps or swaps. Swap is an agreement between two parties to exchange some cash flows or assets sometime in the future as per a prearranged formula. Swaps are broadly stated a series of forward contracts to exchange some assets in future. Swaps help the market participants manage the risk associated with maybe currency movements, interest rate movements or commodity prices. These swaps that help manage the interest rate risk, for example, are called interest rate swaps or IRS. Swaps that help manage the currency risk are called currency swaps. The swaps that help manage the commodity price risk are called commodity swaps. An example would be a party which has to honor an obligation to pay a foreign party in future was to protect from the risk of USD appreciation against INR. So let's say today the price of USD to INR is 1 USD for 82 Indian rupees. The party has to pay two months down the line and they are afraid the USD might become 83 rupees by that time. So they can enter into a contract, a swap agreement, whereby they can swap the USD today for INR and swap it back in future. Same way we can enter into a swap agreement for cash flows in the nature of interest or for commodities as well. I hope you have understood these four broad categories of products and their basic features. Understanding these products, futures, benefit and risk will help you use these for managing your own investments or take position in derivatives or even for taking an option of having a good career in derivative products. I hope you found this video useful. If yes, please do like this video, share with your friends who will find this useful and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Cheers.